Now in AS 2870 it will give you um, different solutions to different types of um, uh, footing and, and slab conditions. Um, these different types of, of slab and, and footing solutions um, are really dependent on the, uh, the, the job site itself, the experience of the builder and, and personal preference for, of the builder as well. Perhaps one of the more common um, uh, slab and uh, footing solutions is the footing slab. This is a, a two-part um, process where the strip footings are, are cast first and then um, the slab itself is uh, cast as a second element. Often the, the two will be joined together with um, uh, starter bars from the reinforcement from the footing and you'll see also that there are uh, situations where the slab is thickened underneath uh, load-bearing walls. Another quite common um, uh, solution is the stiffened draft. Um, the difference between this and the uh, solution before is that the stiffened draft is a single pore solution. Now although the ground works will be a little bit more complicated um, to achieve um, because of all of the, the rebates and the footings and so on, the monolithic character and the fact that it is a single pore has a lot of advantages in terms of um, its durability and rigidity. Notice again that there are situations where we have significant uh, downstand beams um, and there are rules where load-bearing walls, how much offset from downstand beams um, they can be and also other solutions where just a slab thickening uh, underneath load-bearing walls. The advantage, I guess, of the stiffened draft is that in situations where we are on uncontrolled fill sites, we can combine the solution with uh, a peered or piled uh, site. So we can introduce uh, board piers, um, which are concrete filled uh, columns that then go down to um, stable ground and then we cast our raft on top of that. This avoids any uh, problems of uh, subsistence of the uncontrolled fill site. Another um, solution that is, is gaining some popularity is, is a waffle slab. Now the advantage of the waffle slab is that um, there's very little complex um, uh, excavation because it's all built off a flat, uh, absolutely flat platform. The uh, spaces between the main um, uh, downstand beams in the slab are, are created by void formers and these void formers are typically large polystyrene blocks. Uh, though the material costs in this may be a little bit more expensive, um, the, the gain in, in terms of site uh, preparation and time on site um, will often uh, make this a more cost-effective solution. We then start to get into other um, more hybrid solutions and these are contingent I guess on the um, uh, site situation and the project situation. So here we see uh, a quite a deep um, strip footing with a controlled fill underneath a, um, a stiffened slab. So this is a solution um, that one would use in lieu of a cut and fill site where the, the ground um, was, was not as disturbed quite as much. We then have other solutions um, incorporating uh, masonry walls and raised floors. So timber structures on um, exterior um, uh, strip uh, walls and strip footings uh, on columns and also on piers. And we also get, this is probably a little bit more of an unusual situation but perhaps more common in older buildings and retrofits where we have strip footings and um, that come from uh, bearing point uh, deeper underground and then we have um, controlled fill and a very simple slab that's built on that fill You'll notice that the uh, slab is isolated from uh, the, 
the brick walls and load bearing walls so that um, it, it's not an integrated structure but it can move interdependently. Now working uh, with slopes it's important um, to control how the strip footing uh, goes down a slope. Now the code, uh, th sorry not the code, the Australian standard does give some constraints with this so the maximum slope that you can place a, um, a strip footing on without benching or, or stepping it is a 1 in 10 slope. Um, beyond that uh, to come down or up a slope you do need to then step the footing which is a little bit more complicated but still relatively commonplace. Now all um, slabs and footings need to be wrapped in a damp proof membrane to um, prevent moisture coming up through the slab into the um, domestic area. Now the typical um, damp proof membrane specifications are a, just a typical thick polyethylene uh, film or plastic which is usually 200 microns or 0.2 millimeters thick. It needs to be uh, have a high impact resistance because of simply the pressure of the concrete during the pour and the aggregate can puncture the polyethylene layer if it uh, is not rigid enough. Um, sometimes uh, you can uh, put a blinding layer between the, the ground or the, the um, sub-base um, and the point where you put the slab just to sort of protect the, um, the polyethylene um, surface. Now the entire surface needs to be covered that's under the slab and also wrapped underneath the footings as well. Uh, where the um, polyethylene fabric uh, needs to join there should be a lap of at least 200 millimetres and any penetrations of subsoil surfaces like sewerage and so on they need to be taped uh, tightly so to keep the um, integrity of that damp proof membrane. Another very important uh, consideration um, is the control of cracks and the movement of slabs. Now as the slab dries and also in use with uh, creep and with loading on the slabs you can develop um, cracking um, which a lot of the times is not um, structurally problematic but aesthetically um, a real problem. Now we introduce um, two things in this instance um, what we call uh, I guess a control line or a, a control joint which is a, a cut into the slab that goes down about uh, a third of the depth and what this does is that it weakens the slab in one um, particular line and the cracks will generally tend to follow that line so it, it assumes um, a crack in the slab but it controls it. The other type which is a, an isolation joint is where one slab is independent from another. Now this might be done from one uh, between one pore and another pore or where the, um, the slab arrangement needs to, to change because of the design. Now looking at this very simple design here which is just uh, an a offset uh, slab with a column in the middle um, and the size is reasonably large for a, a monolithic slab. So if we take this uh, on board, typically speaking um, we want to break down the areas of the slab into roughly into squares and the largest spacing you want for a, a control joint is approximately 6 metres. Now you can see um, along the, the side part which is uh, a small garage uh, there's been a specification for a fall um, so that the water um, can drain out to the front and because of that you can see a thick line and that's the actual isolation joint so one slab is, um, is butted up hard against another one although they are mechanically connected in, in some particular way you notice as well that we've put a downstand in the top uh, left hand corner. Uh, this downstand is um, to provide an area where we can provide um, 
uh, a fall to bathrooms and so on it's much easier just to provide a simple downstand and then let the the tiler um, provide the fall with a, a mortar bed layer now when we provide downstands we need to plan them in advance and it's not just simply putting a rebate into the uh, concrete but the actual slab uh, thickness needs to be maintained underneath that downstand so the underside of the slab also must push down as a result. Now in a, just a quick summary again of AS2870 it always assumes um, accurate site knowledge and working within a certain uh, set of constraints and variables. For example, there's always an assumption on the concrete mix that it's going to be an N20 with a 20 millimeter um, aggregate fraction and a 100 millimeter slump, which is a, a standard delivery concrete. Now, engineered solutions are required for difficult sites, I guess for non-standard construction and design types and also solutions using different concrete mixes, say higher performance, higher strength concrete and so on. So although AS2870 uh, can provide a lot of generic um, engineering solutions um, by and large with architectural design work which tends to um, sit outside the sort of norm, you would tend to find that you're going uh, more to an engineer to provide the solutions for the slab and footing. One last thing to note is that the other very important aspect of um, setting out a slab is the control of termites. Now the standard that um, controls this is AS3660. Now for a slab on ground there's a few um, very important aspects. The first is um, on the left hand side of this diagram you can see there's a 75 millimeter clear space that shows you um, that needs to be um, always visible, that edge of the slab. Now it works a little bit the same principle as, a, as an ant cap but having that 75 millimeter um, edge exposed means that we can see the um, ingress of, of termites um, from the ground into the house. So any kind of termite uh, protection uh, is premised on the fact that there are regular inspections and that we can see where termites are getting into the house. Where we can't see termites getting into the house, for example at penetrations and also isolation joints, we need to then introduce other barriers like uh, termite mesh and so on, which is a, a commercial product and usually refer to the suppliers of, of such products to see how it should be installed. So that um, wraps up the section on slab on ground and footings in specific reference to 2870. Uh, thanks for your attention and uh, please um, have a look at the other videos to get an overall view of uh, cast construction. Thank you.